What's going on guys, Flyby Simulations here and welcome back to another video covering all of the latest news that we know of about the Phoenix Sim A320. Now with the NDA on this aircraft lifted quite recently uh, and all of the internet flooding with uh, Phoenix A320 media and videos and so on, the release of this aircraft is becoming more and more imminent and Amir, the official spokesperson for Phoenix, has gone on their official Discord server to give us more information about how the launch is going to be planned and whether the aircraft is going to be gracing our simulators very very shortly or not. And let me tell each and every single one of you guys, the news is very, very exciting, not only with the aircraft itself, but as a company as to how Phoenix operates, how their focus is on transparency and being open with the community. All of this is very, very exciting stuff for a new developer on the horizon for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we're going to be covering every single nook and cranny and every single detail available. And uh, if you guys haven't already, please make sure to give this video a like. It takes just one second, but it helps a small channel like mine out tremendously. So please do that. And also, if you guys want to stay up to date with all of the latest Microsoft Flight Simulator news, then make sure to subscribe to this channel and also hit that little notification or bell icon so you guys stay notified every time I upload a video. Now with that all said, let's delve into the post made by Amir and understand what exactly is the plan for the launch details of this aircraft. So ladies and gentlemen, the Phoenix Simulations A320 edges closer and closer to release for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Early this morning, Phoenix CEO Amir shared another update on the official Discord as I mentioned, saying that they believe that they have built the final release candidate of the aircraft. Now, first and foremost, let me just go ahead and clarify, this does not mean that the Phoenix Simulations A320 is available for the public. It is still an internal release candidate. All that means is that the final version of the aircraft that would most probably be released for the public eventually is ready to go. So the aircraft is no longer in beta. It's in its first release candidate, which means that all of the footage you guys might be seeing with the different beta testers that might be receiving this release candidate online would probably be the final version of the aircraft you will also get to try when it eventually comes to your simulator and when Phoenix eventually decides to release this to the public. Amir wants to ensure that everyone who buys the aircraft has the best experience possible. And if you want to know more about this, and if you want to know all of the different features and everything new we have learned about the aircraft so far, check out this video on screen, or you can check it out in the description section of the video after watching this video you guys are seeing right now as well. It covers everything to do with the latest failure system, the price of the aircraft and everything like that. He said that the testers will poke around with this release candidate version for a day or two. Uh, providing that goes well, then the next step would be to allow every everyone to buy the anticipated Airbus aircraft. Now, a day or two are the operative words there. That means that, you know, if everything goes right, barring there's no major problems with the release candidate, which I don't think there should be because the beta version is working flawlessly and the release candidate is just an upgraded version of that with most of the bugs fixed. If that works properly for a day or two, we might just be seeing this aircraft coming to our simulators by the end of this week, which is very, very exciting news for anybody who wants a high fidelity Airbus simulation in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Now, in terms of the launch plans in general, Amir is candid in saying that the team are doing everything they can now to ensure a seamless customer experience. They're aware that interest in the plane is high, and it's possible that something may go wrong. However, the team will be on hand to resolve issues quickly and put things right. Amir even says, if potential day one issues are not your jam, by all means steer clear for a while. And that itself, ladies and gentlemen, is something amazing. Like you see developers like PMDG, not to trash talk PMDG, I love what they do, but you know, they always reward customers for buying their product early. And you can always do that if you're very confident in your aircraft. But even with all of the amazing sort of like previews we've seen of this aircraft by beta testers floating around online, uh, it's, it's, it's very stable, it's very perfect as of right now. Uh, Amir is still saying that you don't, there's no incentives to actually buy this aircraft on day one. So take your time, watch some reviews from YouTubers like myself and my other colleagues, as well as read some of the other reviews you might see on news websites. And if you are satisfied, only then do you have to purchase it. There's no price decreases for the first week of purchasing the aircraft or anything like that, which is very, very good. It's very customer oriented behavior. Now, in an interesting move, Amir has also given some information about some of the weaknesses that will be coming with the release version of the Phoenix A320. Now, I am a complete believer in transparency, but this is going above and beyond. This is almost like corporate social responsibility at this point. I mean, he's being so nice that he's outright telling us the weaknesses of this aircraft and making us, you know, be sure before we purchase. I, I highly doubt that there's going to be a lot of people that can complain about this aircraft after purchasing it because they know everything there is to know about this aircraft prior to purchasing it. So very good. 
He said that there are two big weaknesses that need addressing. First things first is that the engines are seeing about a 6% margin on the fuel burn than the real numbers. This is down to how Microsoft Flight Simulator uses a single point of tuning for the fuel flow. The ultimate plan is for Phoenix to create a completely custom engine model, and the release build will include custom startup, shutdown, uh, EGT, which stands for exhaust gas temperature, spool times, etc. But to go further requires even more work. So what Amir said is that given we're so close to the numbers already, holding back for an undefined period of time, at least a few months, doesn't seem worth it. Quite frankly, to the average eye, nothing will appear amiss, but you guys are far from average, aren't you? He's very like sort of emotive and very funny on his uh, on his discords as well as his uh, blogs. So once post-launch cleanup calms down, they'll get cracking on a fully Phoenix engine solution. So again, there's only about a 6% discrepancy on the fuel burn characteristics of the aircraft that should not be noticed by most simmers who are coming from the fly-by-wire or even maybe some of the other simulations on other simulators. Um, but it is not perfect and that is not down to the Phoenix team. They've done everything in their power, but they would have to devise a completely proprietary engine model to be able to fix this problem and they don't want to keep the aircraft away from the large mass of the population that's not going to notice a discrepancy this small they rather release it uh, as perfect as it is already and they'll improve this as time passes the second weakness that he focused on is that the team aren't entirely happy with the display units now don't get me wrong, there's more to it than meets the eye. Uh, it's not as bad as it looks. He said that the issues are minor cosmetic issues, which means like shape scaling, text positioning, font, and so on. But he wants to fix this properly and not fix it with duct tape and prayers. But from what I've seen with the media and all of that stuff online, the display units look absolutely fantastic. So they're, they're just talking about minute details that again, an average simmer would not notice, but they want to sort of, you know, sleep well at night and have a clear conscience. So they're gonna go ahead and fix that too after the product eventually launches. Now, alongside these two issues, the team will be working on hundreds of other things after the aircraft has been released. Amir further went on to say that transparency counts for a lot in this community, so I'd rather talk about it at the risk of scaring some people than ignore it, Amir concluded when talking about some of the shortcomings at launch. Now, another important piece of information to come from the post was the external system Phoenix uses to power the A320. Now, this is something new. I've never seen this before, especially for an add-on aircraft. I mean, most of the add-on aircraft are drag and drop into the community folder and then you fly them. Uh, I mean, you do have like proprietary softwares like the PMDG Operating Center, but that's only for livery management and downloading and installing updates. It doesn't have to run in the background, but uh, the Phoenix A320 is going to be trying something new. Similar to what Airsoft does with their VGDS, which is the visual guidance and docking system. It's the little system that allows you to uh, come in and park at major international airports without the need of a marshaller. Airsoft has that. Um, the majority of the A320 system, the Phoenix A320 that is, are run outside of the simulator itself. This has many advantages, including the ability to choose what hardware to render displays and help with performance. So this system might lend itself to multi-monitor support as well as home cockpit support. For those of you guys who are serious simmers and who have Airbus cockpits at home and want to simulate various different systems in as efficient a way as possible, you can do this with this external software running. Another benefit of this external app is how Phoenix can make the customer experience as easy as possible. What this means is that there's no need for 2FA, serial numbers, or verification links after you purchase the product. You would just need to download the installer, log into your Phoenix account made when you originally purchased the product, and things will then work automatically. So there's no verification links and you, you don't have a set number of keys and a set number of attempts with that key. You will have just your account and you can log into your account as many times as you want. For those wanting to install it on multiple machines, Amir says that this functionality is coming, but this will be coming in the future once once their colleagues in Ukraine are back up and running. I think the specifics of this are that the Phoenix A320 will only be available on one device for now. However, once their Ukraine servers and their friends in Ukraine are available uh, to host this uh, sort of app in a more widespread way, then uh, you can actually have the Phoenix A320 working simultaneously or at least seamlessly between three devices. So that is pretty cool stuff. We just have to wait for the political climate to clear up over there. Uh, obviously very understandable considering what's happening in Ukraine. So. Uh, we're willing to give them that time. But Amir also said that if you do want to sim on multiple devices, you just have to contact the support team and they will be able to reset your link very quickly. And then you can log into your other device and you will be able to download and install the A320 on the new device as well. So it's going to be very seamless. And um, yeah, you just have to wait till the Ukraine servers are back up. 
Amir said that developing the Phoenix A320 for Microsoft Flight Simulator has been an absolute labor of love, all-nighters, and passion to create a flight simulation experience we want, and hopefully you do too. And I personally am a proponent of something that is so detailed and a company that is so transparent and open um, to feedback, as well as to how they operate and trying to keep the community in the loop as much as possible, as well as the pricing. I mean, we discussed this in more detail in the previous video I made about this aircraft, but 50 pounds is very, very reasonable for an aircraft aircraft that is so high fidelity. So as you guys can see, we're now pretty close to the Phoenix Simulations A320 release. So close actually that the landing page on their website is now live, which means that the aircraft will be made available on their page. I will leave a link to their official website again down in the description section of this video if you guys want to check that out. Don't panic, it's not out yet unless you have a spare 10 million sitting around to buy the actual aircraft itself, but you can get an idea of what is included. Again, go watch the previous video. There is so much new stuff coming with this aircraft that I have never seen before and I have been part of this community for literally the last seven to eight years and all of this stuff is new to me even so for those of you new flight simmers who have just joined this community there is going to be so much exciting stuff and you guys are truly part of a pioneering era in flight simulation So ladies and gentlemen, that is all we had from the Phoenix team. Hopefully you guys found this video informative. I will leave again a link to their official website as well as their official Discord down in the description section of this video. And speaking of Discord, I also have a Discord channel of my own or a Discord server, I think it's called. It is also linked down in the description section of the video. It's a great place for all flight simulation enthusiasts to just come and talk about everything that is aviation and aerospace and flight simulation. It's a very good community. I have around 200 people there. You also get to suggest sort of like, you know, video ideas and so on if you want to help support the channel directly. As I mentioned at the start of the video, it only takes one second, but if you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys want to support the channel, also make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little bell icon or the notification icon so you guys can stay notified every time another one of these news videos or cinematic videos or any of the other plethora of content I create on Microsoft Flight Simulator gets released by me on this YouTube channel. With that all said, thanks for flying by.